What up? It's Friday. It's hashtag Ask Lauren time. Okay, this is gonna be like a speed round. We're gonna try and get through a lot of the questions you've posted on YouTube and Instagram and Twitter rather than focusing on one particular topic today. Let's do this. Uh, Manti Core MB on Instagram said, how long have you been a vegetarian or when was the last time you craved for the flesh of a once living thing? Okay, well, I've been vegan for uh, five and a bit years. I'm in my sixth year. I was vegetarian from the time I was about 12 or 13 until I was about 19. And then I went back and forth a bunch in between from omnivore to vegetarianism. But it wasn't until I went vegan that everything made sense and I felt the best I've ever felt. And I do not crave the flesh of a once living thing. I actually crave vegan meats. <laughs> hey, Fixie. Hi, Matt. Uh, why did all the dinosaurs go away? Well, Matt, I don't think they have. I think that they're somewhere on this planet disguised as crocodiles and birds, uh, like they say in Jurassic Park. But yeah, I mean, they are gone, they're extinct, and they probably went away because, you know, everything runs its course and everything dies eventually. And things have to change and start anew. But wouldn't it be so cool if we lived with dinosaurs? Yes. Favorite emoji. I've answered this before, but I'll answer it again. That's from uh, Kieran R. Booth. It's the eggplant and it's the face that's like got the straight mouth and the eyes like this. Uh, favorite social media app? Instagram! I'm trying to do Snapchat. Ugh, it's exhausting. Ain't nobody got time to do Vine and Snapchat and Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and Pinterest and blogging and YouTube and it's crazy. Zombie Sasha asked, have you ever convinced anyone to go vegan? If so, how many and how do you do it? Well, I convinced my boyfriend John to go vegan, although it wasn't a hard sell. Um, I made Phoebe Dykstra go vegan because she saw what a wonderful life I was leading as a vegan and she was only vegetarian. And then one day she was just like, I'm going vegan. And she gave up cheese, which she loved cheese and now she doesn't. And I mean, it's not really how you do it. I think just by living my life and being who I am, people are like curious. And then they ask all the questions. I never force anybody to talk about veganism. I never tell anybody that what they're eating is wrong. I never bring it up. People always wanna talk about it with me and they ask me all the questions. And through that uh, engagement and through that interaction, um, I feel like you kind of plant the seed in someone's head and then they keep thinking about it because they know, and I've said this before, but they know that what they're eating doesn't feel right somewhere inside their body or their mind or their soul, right? Kevy said, what do you think you only do? This is a hard one. I don't know. I don't think, I think that no matter what you do, someone else also does it. Like, yes, we're all unique and blah, blah, blah. I think that like, there are like replicas of people on the planet. I know people that look like other people and I don't mean like doppelgangers. I just mean like they have the same nails or they have the same like eye crow wrinkles or like there's some feature about them like a chin where you're like, you look like you're related to that person even though you're not. And I feel like it's like some weird, like some type of weird species recognition or something. I don't know. Do, does anyone know what I'm talking about? No. I have yet to meet really anyone though that I've, I've noticed that they have the same like hands as me or something. Like other than people I'm actually blood related to, I notice that like when I'm out at a coffee shop, I'll be like, oh, that person's thumb looks like this person's thumb. Like it's so weird. I'm like way too observant. Okay, so maybe that's what I do that no one else does is like I look at the smallest details on people, like the tiniest little things and I'm not judging them. I just notice it and then I like get fixated on it and then I, I start comparing it or thinking, like, you know, oh, that looks like my friend so-and-so's um, cuticle. Like, it'll be the smallest thing. It's super weird. <laughs> Arlene uh, J. Courtois said, where would you like to travel to next? I really wanna go to Thailand. The goal is to go to Thailand for at least three to four weeks over Christmas with John. Let's hope we can do it. You know, if we're really busy with work, maybe it's not a good time to go. But I really do now vow to go away for Christmas for the whole month, forever and ever till I die because it's the best thing ever to not be home during Christmas and to like not have to be part of the whole of like going to everyone's place and, blah, 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 and presents and all that stuff. I hate that stuff. 
I'm over it. I like want to go to somewhere hot and tropical and amazing and adventurous over Christmas. Last year we went to Costa Rica for three and a half weeks and it was the best thing. And that was the first time I ever was not home for Christmas. Health Nut Nutrition, hi. She asked, what is your top three favorite vegan restaurants to eat at in Toronto? Okay, newly opened Pizza Pie Calypse at uh, Bloor and Christie. Um, amazing, the best pizza. Uh, the stuff Jen makes is amazing. She's got like eight or 10 different pizzas every day uh, on the menu, go get slices. And she's got donuts and all kinds of things. Vegan soft serve, oh my God, it's so good. Actually, just before I shot this, I ate a piece of her pizza. <laughs> also Hogtown Vegan, uh, uh, love it, love it, love it, the best. And I'm gonna go with Live is another one. So there's one at uh, DuPont Spadina and another one right around where I live in Liberty Village at the, uh, to like a takeout market. Twyoth288 said, do you still follow much in MTV shows like Degrassi now that you are not working there? No, I do not. Uh, you may remember me from such commercial breaks during Gossip Girl and Degrassi and Pretty Little Liars and Teen Wolf. And I watched them when I worked there because I had to, but I also enjoyed them. And uh, now that I don't work there, I, I don't watch them. Uh, I have no cable. I uh, watch TV another way. Uh, and I watch Netflix. And now that Degrassi's gonna be on Netflix, I will watch it, absolutely. Um, but I just didn't have cable and streaming them from said websites is a pain in the arse. Nolwyn asks, hello, uh, do you miss working on much uh, slash working with Phoebe? I miss working with Phoebe. I think we had so much fun and we, we did some cool stuff together on MTV and on After Degrassi, but I don't miss it, to be honest with you at all. Um, like I don't miss my job, I don't miss my old job. I've talked about this before, but I just have grown out of it. Uh, I didn't you know, belong there anymore. I was meant to be doing this and all these new exciting things I'm doing, so I don't miss it. I loved the time I was there. I got so much out of it, but we are on, you know, new ground here and I'm more excited about this and what's to come. Uh, Bianca wants to know what kind of makeup and skincare brands I use, but I'm gonna do a separate video about that. And Good Luck Charm says, how hard is it getting into the TV industry in Canada? Are the jobs behind it in front of the camera as scarce as people make it seem? Well, yes, I mean, the Canadian television industry is pretty much collapsing before our eyes. I mean, they let go of over 110 people at Bell Media where I worked maybe even close to 150 in the last year. Uh, all the other broadcasting networks uh, let go of people. There are all these skilled people with lots of experience who are looking for work. And so if you're just getting into the industry, I mean, I don't really quite know the climate because I don't really work at that level anymore. Um, but I would guess it's pretty hard to get a job. It's more, even more hard in Canada to get an on-camera job on network television because think of the people you know that have been on TV in the last five years. Like, there's a handful of us. I think things are just changing and so if you are planning on getting into uh, television, then be innovative and be fresh and think outside the box and come up with your own way of doing what you want to do without the, um, without the red tape, let's say, of Canadian television networks. We have the internet and all these social media apps and it's like, you can reach more people through these other means. And I think television, we just need to give it some time to catch up and figure itself out. And I didn't want to stick around you know, waiting for the tides to change. I hope I answered your question. If I didn't, we can talk about that one in a lot more detail as a separate video as well. If you have more questions, hashtag Ask Lauren on Twitter, hashtag Ask Lauren on Instagram, or leave a comment below with other fun questions. And we do this every Friday. And that's all for me. I'll see you Sunday with an episode of Lauren in Real Life with some adventures that I get up to. Okay, bye.